Adam Saxon here with the Power BI team. And in this video, I'm gonna show you three reasons to get excited about Power BI data flows. Stay tuned. All right, Power BI data flows. Data flows is a new feature inside of Power BI, and this is all about self-service data preparation inside of Power BI. So traditionally before, Power BI Desktop gave you these awesome tools like Power Query, which lets you do lightweight ETL operations on your data inside of Power BI Desktop. The challenge with this is you tended to bypass the normal ETL processes that your organization may have so that other users couldn't take advantage of all of that work. Enter Power BI Data Flows. So Data Flows allows you to have that ETL operation in a centralized manner that other people can take advantage of. ETL is now a first class citizen inside of Power BI and it's self-service capable, right? So this is self-service data warehousing for Power BI. Power BI Dataflows has entered public preview, which means you can now take advantage of this awesome feature. Before you do that, I wanna show you three reasons to get excited about Power BI Dataflows. The first reason is that this is self-service data preparation inside of Power BI. Before we had Power Query inside of Power BI, this was obviously a powerful combination. You can still use that today. It does amazing things. But one thing that it did was it allowed you to bypass any type of ETL processes that your organization had in place. And sometimes that can be a problem. While it made it easy to do this from a self-service perspective inside of Power BI Desktop, what it didn't allow you to do is to allow other people to take advantage of those ETL steps that you created as well. Enter Power BI Data Flows. This is self-service data warehousing. This is ETL as a first-class citizen inside of Power BI. This means you can create a data flow and provide those ETL steps inside of the data flow itself and allow other people to take advantage of that work. Enough talking, let's dig into Power BI and see what this looks like. You can see here that I have a regular workspace inside of Power BI, and I've got the normal tabs of dashboards, reports, workbooks, and data sets. There is a new tab here called Data Flows Preview because it's in public preview. If we go ahead and select that tab, we will see that I don't have any data flows currently created. So let's go up to the top and we will create one. Select create and then select data flows. And this will take me to a screen where I can define entities within my data flows. Everything's broken down into entities and these will basically think of these as like a table, right? So there's gonna be data underneath these entities that map to it. All right, so let's create a new entity. And the cool thing about data flows is that when I go to create that entity, you will see a new experience here in the web, but it's not so new. This is Power Query in the web, which is awesome. We're gonna grab some data from Dynamics. And the way I can do that is through common data service for apps. And let's go ahead and select that. And we will give it a server URL. And we will go ahead and sign in. And once we're signed in, we can go ahead and hit next. And then we can see existing entities inside of the common data service for application. So let me go ahead and expand that real quick. And I will just grab a simple item here called account and sales order. All right, so I've got these. You will see the normal, this looks a lot like Power Query. So let's go ahead and hit next. And then here's where I get that awesome experience from Power Query where I can shape the data, I can pull it and I can do all sorts of transformations on it. This is coming from an actual entity inside of the Common Data Service or app. So I don't really have to do a whole lot here because it's already there. One thing I will do is I'll map to standard. And so I will select account. And what this is doing is I'm mapping this to an actual entity type that is a common schema item. I'll come back to that in a second. So let's go ahead and hit okay. I don't have to do any additional mapping here. I can if I want, but this is already a count and I know what this is going to do. Account is an account is an account. So let's go to sales order and we're gonna map this as well. And in this case, it's sales order. So it's gonna be of the order entity type. And we can see here, everything lines up as expected. That's great, let's go ahead and hit okay. And then we're gonna hit done. Now I've got two entities 
inside of my data flow so far. Now, the other thing I can do here is I can go ahead and add an additional entity. So I can pull data in from other items as well. So let me go ahead and add another entity and we'll grab some data from SQL Server. So let's go ahead and choose a SQL Server. This is, in this case, it's gonna be an Azure SQL database. Let's go ahead and hit that. All right, once we've got our information in here, we'll hit next to connect to this Azure SQL database. And in here, I will see additional information. And what I want is a counts and calls. And then I can go ahead and load that as well. And at this point, I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to go ahead and hit done. And then once we've got our entities inside of our data flow, we can go ahead and save that data flow out. And I can give it a, call, I can give it a name call it account and sales and I'll hit save. And then we have to actually refresh this data. So what this has done is it creates the actual data flow in the system. This is the schema and the structure of that data flow, but we need to hit refresh to actually pull that data and store it inside of Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, which is underneath the covers. And so I can go ahead and do that. So we're gonna close and then next to the item, I can just go to refresh now. And this is actually refreshing the actual data under the covers. Let's talk about some Power BI premium specific features for Power BI data flows. I mentioned we have to refresh that data. This could be a very large data set. It could take a lot of time to refresh. And the normal behavior of refresh inside of Power BI is that we're gonna refresh the entire set of data that is coming into the system. One of the things we get with Power BI Premium is we can do incremental refresh on that data flow. Very cool. And this allows us to update a small segment based on a policy that we've defined in the system. Another Power BI Premium specific item is what is called linked entities. And what this means is I can reference other entities in the system and build on top of what's already been created. So for example, if I go in to create another data flow, in here you will see we, before we created a regular entity, so we just added a new entity, but I could also have the option of adding a linked entity within the system. And when we do that, that will allow me to select an existing entity that's there and then do further operations on top of it if I want. And the beauty of this is that when the data flow is refreshed or even refreshed downstream, it understands what's related to it. And so it'll take care of refreshing for you. So you can always make sure that you have the latest set of information available. The beautiful thing about linked entities is that you can actually take advantage of what other people have created to reduce duplication and to ensure consistency of your data itself. So if something gets edited in the data flow that's downstream, those changes will take effect in this new linked entity as well. So consistency is important. The other thing to consider with Power BI Premium is it comes with 100 terabytes of storage underneath the hoods of that premium node. And so you can take full advantage of that storage space with Power BI data flows. All right, so we've created the data flow. Now we've got to actually use that data in our reports. The data flow itself is not a data set. That's a very important distinction. The data set is the semantic model on top of data. Power BI data flows and a data flow created in the system is the data, right? It's schematized data. And we still have to create a data set. To do that, we jump over to trusty Power BI desktop. And if we go to Power BI Desktop, one of the things we'll see as an option if I go to Get Data is I will now see Power BI Data Flows listed there. It's a preview connector, so I'll just have to hit Continue. And assuming I'm signed in, I will get a list of different workspaces that I have available to me, and I will see the one that we created, which is this Account and Sales. And then I can choose the actual entities inside that I want to grab. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then you can further edit these items inside of Power Query, inside of Power BI Desktop, if you so choose, or we can just go ahead and hit load. And when we do that, this is gonna pull that data inside of Power BI Desktop, at which point we can create our data model and our reports on top of that, and then publish this to the Power BI service. Pretty easy. That is how you can create a data set, get that up into the Power BI service to take advantage of the entities inside of a data flow. That's how we can create data flows inside of the Power BI service. The second reason to get excited about Power BI data flows is our extensibility to other services. So this includes Azure and Dynamics. And think about this for a second. So I'm creating these data flows, which will end up 
putting that data inside of Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. By default, it's gonna be housed inside of the default structure that Power BI gives you, but what you can also do is change your tenant to point to another Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account. This is one that you bring to the table that's in an Azure subscription. When you do that, other services can look at that data too. So this now becomes a common repository of your data. When you do this, other Azure services can take advantage of this data as well. So think about Azure Machine Learning, think of Azure Databricks or Azure Data Factory. All of these things can work with the data that's already there or even help put data into the system and then mount that back into Power BI. So it offers a ton of flexibility in the system itself. Okay, the third reason to get excited about Power BI data flows is the common data model. Common data model, if you've used Dynamics, you may be familiar with this. If you're using Power Apps, you may also be familiar with this. This leverages the common data model to the Power BI service and to Power BI data flows as a whole. The common data model, think of this as common entities that are out there that are schematized. So we looked at a few of them, account and order. These are items that are preset as a schema. So an account is an account is an account. And what happens here when we create a data flow, it creates a common data folder inside of Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, and it will create a schematized JSON file for your data, and then the CSV files under the hood. This includes the information about the common data model entities that are part of your data. Now, you're not restricted to the actual entities inside of the common data model. You can create custom entities as well, but you can absolutely take advantage of those entities that are predefined to make sure that systems understand what it is you're looking at. And this also opens up a lot of possibilities as well when we look at the open data initiative that was announced recently with Adobe and SAP. And so this opens up even more possibilities for your data and consumption and creation of that. I would love to get your thoughts about Power BI data flows. What do you think? Is this something that you may use inside of your organization? Is it something you're excited about? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let us know. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If it's your first time here, hit the subscribe button as well. And from all of us on the Power BI team, thank you so much for doing what you do and for using Power BI.